Hey gang, welcome to the first installment of a four-part series on combi programming for the Chord Cross. In this video, I am going to go over planning specific patches for your combi, as well as setting up a second keyboard operated via MIDI by the Cross in order to expand our keyboard real estate. In the second video, I'll talk about designating keyboard splits across both keyboards. In the third video, I'll cover layering additional sounds on top of our original sounds in order to create harmonies. And in the last video, I'll add some finishing touches and teach you how to access an additional hidden layer of sound via external modulation. The example combi I'll be programming is going to be Africa by Toto on request of one of my viewers. All right, let's get started. But before we do, don't forget to hit like, subscribe if you haven't yet, and to follow me on your preferred social platforms. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about planning our combi. So before you get started with programming anything on the cross, it's a really good idea to take a few moments to think about all the sounds you're gonna need and kind of come up with a placement strategy for each sound. Now, if you're working with two keyboards, this gives you a lot of freedom and convenience to sort of place everything in a really handy way. So perhaps you play in a live band like myself and you're expected to cover multiple duties such as acoustic piano, electric piano, strings and brass, synthesizers, as well as any sound effects or drum samples, then you're gonna need to actually sit and think about where everything should go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Africa combi that I programmed and get a closer look at some of the details. Okay, so here we are at the control center. Let's have a quick tour of all the sounds. Up front and center, we've got our brass pad. So I like keep that right here. Up here we have our vibes. Next up, we have our flutes. And then I can layer in another set of vibraphones on top via external modulation. So that's pretty fun. Then we have some acoustic piano right down here. I like to layer that in with the brass. Just kind of gives it a little more sonic variation. And then last but not least, I have a gong sound up here, which is pretty awesome. So now that you have an idea of the different sounds you might need and where they should go, it's time to show you guys how to physically connect your second board to the chord cross. Now, in order to activate your second keyboard as a MIDI controller to the cross, there are a few steps involved that you're gonna need to understand. First, you need to make sure that your second board is capable of supporting MIDI data as well as independent MIDI channels. The reason is because you need to sync up the channels from one board to the other. Second, you need a five pin MIDI cable long enough to reach both boards. As you can see, this may work, but it's probably a better idea to get a longer one, something more like this. With this cable, there are actually two sets on each side but you really only need one. 
This is only going to be if you want to send MIDI data back and forth between the two keyboards, which we don't need to worry about. So we're just going to go with these two today. All right, now we're behind the scenes of our Chord Cross and our MIDI controller. We've got our Chord Cross up here, MIDI controller on the bottom. So take your MIDI cable and plug in the out of your controller to the in of your Chord Cross. It just so happens that the shorter cable seems to be long enough to reach both boards. However, I wouldn't take this to a gig. I would definitely have a longer one to connect the two just to give myself a little more leeway. However, it looks pretty nice and organized. So one way to think about this is that the MIDI controller is sending data out and into the cross where the cross is going to trigger the sounds that you've programmed it for the MIDI controller to access. The next thing you're going to want to do is go into the settings of your MIDI controller and select the channel that you want to transmit data. I'm going to go ahead and select channel 5. Now you're ready to start programming on the chord cross. That covers all of our topics for this video. In the next video we're going to cover keyboard splits and how to program them across both boards. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.